I have a lot of people ask me, what project should I put on my resume? And I think if you're asking me for what you should build to put on your resume, you've already kind of lost the game. The most important part about putting projects on your resume is showing recruiters how you think about problems and trying to stand out from the crowd. So if I were to give you one project to put on your resume and I gave that advice to 100 people, 1,000 people, then all of a sudden your idea is a lot less unique and a lot less valuable. So what I want to try to do today is give you a little bit of a framework. How if I were you starting from scratch with no meaningful projects on my resume, I would go about picking something to build, doing a design for that and actually implementing the project. Those are our three going to be our three chapters. I'm going to try and make sure that I actually put it in the in the description down there. OK, so the number one thing that you should strive to do if you can at all is you want to try to solve problems that you genuinely have in your real life by building a software solution to that problem. I can't really tell you what problems you might have in your life. I don't know, maybe something around like scheduling your calendar, or keeping some things up to date, whatever. But imagine on your resume that you can pitch a real world problem that you had that you took all the way from like problem idea to proposing some type of way that you can make your life easier through software, designing and building that. This is the job. That's the whole job we do every day. Nine out of 10 times, you just get a problem thrown at you that you have to come up with the software solution for. So being able to show that you have experience with doing that, I think really genuinely stands out. For me, I recently built something that was a shared expense tracker with me and my fiance. Maybe you don't need to share expenses with people, but you get the idea. Something that optimized the workflow specifically for me. Don't worry about if there are other things out there that already do this task. Let's say that you can't think of a real software solution problem. OK, I think this is the camp that people mostly fall into. Don't worry, I've got something cooked up for you, too. And I, I think this is actually the secret sauce of the video. I'm not going to lie. And I'm going to be honest. Uh, I, I stole this idea a little bit from Mr. Beast. OK, there is like this old clip. I'm not going to find it. I'm lazy where Mr. Beast talks about a way that you could come up with YouTube video ideas is you open up to random pages in the dictionary and you pick a word and you try to think of video ideas off of that word. Right. So my version of this here is, you know, you go to a random noun generator website and you get a list of 20 nouns and you just try to come up with five project ideas using those 20 nouns. OK, now I am going to read off of my list here and I'm going to put them up on screen. OK, so here's the 20 that I got. Uh, I'm not going to go through and read them all. You can pause if you want and see what I was working with. You can try this part yourself. You can let me know if you came up with a different idea in the comments. OK, quick editing Brad note here. Yes, I look the same. I'm editing right after recording. I want to speed this up a little bit, so I'm only going to show you like two of the ideas that I came up with. OK, daily reflection. Apple has this built into health now, but it's somewhat limited. It doesn't let you write long notes associated with your mood reflections. Uh, write an app that sends you push notifications like Apple, but more focused on what I personally would want out of this type of reflection. The ability to write any of my own reasons and encourages elaboration. Uh, two player conversation game, list of icebreaker slash conversation starter questions that are framed in a yes, no manner. Both parties answer 10 of them back to back. You have to answer them in like 60 seconds. And then you enter the conversation phase. The app will show you one question that you differed on answers on at a time. And it will basically just pause and it will give you time to discuss and you tell it when to move on. This one is the one that I would probably build if I were trying to build this for a resume, because I think it's the most involved and it's the most outright interesting. You never necessarily have to use this. You maybe don't even want to play this game. That's fine. But it has interactions that are useful in a web app sense, right? Or in an app sense. It has this idea of creating rooms for two players to enter and maybe entering in their custom questions, recording their answers, entering into this sort of second phase of the game where it compares your answers together. Like these are all like technical problems that are probably going to come up and you can pitch in an interesting way. These are all just random ideas. And that point is that you don't have to build all of them. You just build one. You might not find any ideas that you really like. So just do it again. I came up with these ideas legitimately. I think it was like 1030 at night and I did this in maybe 10 minutes. So spend a little bit of time. Try to come up with an idea that you genuinely like. OK, now what's the allure of this? Why do this? The number of times that I guarantee you that a recruiter sees a Twitter clone on a resume every day, it must drive them insane if they are trying to do like junior dev applications. OK, so this is my cheat code. OK, you just need to build something that odds are nobody else has built. 
You want to show some amount of unique problem solving ability that they are confident that you designed the software solution. Do something that a recruiter is confident no tutorial exists for. So now let's head into the design phase. All right. The design phase, I think, is the phase of this process that most people probably care least about, but I care most about. This is the part of CS that I am the most interested in. And you can't exactly put this on your resume, but you could put it into your repo. But I still think it's worth doing. OK, I think it's going to make you a better engineer, and I would still encourage you to do this. Especially because if someone asks you about the project later, you can say like, oh, yeah, this was my initial design. As I was building, I had to tweak these parts. I thought that maybe we would do this in the future. Blah. OK, so here's how you do the design. First of all, you want to design the absolute simplest, easiest version that you can possibly come up with to get this thing working. Let's take my conversation difference finder. Maybe for whatever reason, I think it'll be easier to store these things in a Google Doc. Would you ever suggest that to someone in production? No, but maybe just you want to get to a working product as fast as humanly possible. OK, you're not worrying about clickbaiting on your resume. You're not worrying about any sense of production readiness. You just want a working version of the thing. And so you say we've got, I don't know, the sheets backend as our database, right? And you're like, OK, we're not going to build any sort of backend. We're just going to do all of the front end work. And this is how all the data is going to be laid out. And this is how we're going to grab data, et cetera. And this is just design. You're not building this yet. Then you design the version that you think that Facebook, Google, Microsoft would design. OK, you just so you take your simple one, you put it off to the side, you start fresh and you're like, OK, I've got these microservices. I've got multiple databases. I have load balancers. I have uh, all of these auto scaling concerns, right? I'm trying to serve this to a million people at once. So for me, this was always the easy part. Maybe for you, this is a little bit harder and you might need to find some online resources about system design patterns, things like that. I know that Neat Code has some videos on some. I'm sure that you can find good blog post articles. I don't know. Just look up system design stuff. Uh, system design interview prep is probably where you're going to get like your baseline. If, you, if you're feeling really lost about how Facebook might design something like this, then System design interview questions is probably a good launch point. My goal would be for you to build the MVP, build the simple version, and then very slowly build on top of that simple version and iterate onto the final version of the product. And obviously your final version of the product is not going to be as high scale, or maybe you can't afford to spin up that many cloud resources depending on your design. That's totally fine. Get as close to the final version as you possibly can, but iterate through that process, because if you can show in some meaningful way on your resume or talk to a recruiter about or talk to an engineer about the process of going from minimum viable product, the simplest possible thing you could do to get this thing working to something that you think is more robust. That is going to set you apart. Not many people do that. Again, tons of people are just looking at pre-made designs for Twitter clones and building the end product immediately. You would be surprised how often you opt for a simple version in a real production scenario that's the fewest number of changes humanly possible and how valuable that skill is to understand. I think this experience is going to be incredibly valuable. And I think your ability to pitch this on a resume, assuming that you have even like a one out of 10 marketing skill is going to be better than the person that just takes a pre-made project off the shelf that they followed a tutorial for and put that on their resume. All right. Thanks for uh, thanks for watching and I will catch you next time. Adios.